All right, what can I say? I risked getting killed in Vietnam so I could afford an education. And even then it wasn't enough to afford an education. So I could get a good education in science and math. For eight years, I worked probably at least 16 hours a day, some days all night without sleep, solving difficult, difficult problems. There is either a right answer or a wrong answer. You either got a right or you got it wrong. There's no theories or hypotheses or conjectures or arguments. It was either right or it was wrong. So what I'm bringing to you about the cosmic expansion model of the universe is right. It's not a theory. I just don't seem to be able to get through to people. Maybe the problem is, is that my skills presentation skills are not really up to snuff, but I'm working on that, okay? So I've got something important to say. If Albert Einstein got a ticker tape parade in New York for one of his tricky little predictions, which was bullshit, well, I guarantee it, you know, well, I've got the real deal here for you. I don't want any ticker tape parades. I wanna share with you the truth because the world should know the truth. And right now, you're so deep in government bullshit, you can't see the truth. Well, excuse me. Oh, I excuse the title, you know, to a little dramatic. I'm just trying to get Google's attention a little bit. Hey, I'm not Alex Jones. I'm not a crackpot. I've got the holy grail of physics. You know, this is fact. It's provable if you know if it doesn't come across maybe it's my bad maybe it's your bad maybe you have to work a little harder at it so let's not fool each other here this isn't a hypothesis this is a correct accurate provable these are facts and they're based supported by experimental evidence that was touted to support to validate Einstein's relativity, but it, <laughs> what can I tell you? If you're a real science, like scientist like Lewis Essen, or like myself, you know, you can smell a Rocky Mountain skunk, okay? We don't even want to go there. Forget about all that, okay? Come here and listen to me, and hopefully, you know, you'll learn the truth. Well, the truth is here. Can I convey it? Can you understand it? So um, I thought what we'd start with today was a little bit of um, review on, um, on the Doppler effect. I always tell people, you know, um, uh, bail out if you don't know that much about basic science but still you know maybe i should explain this a little bit and we could just start out kind of slow and maybe ease into it a little bit so you can see that this isn't a hypothesis this isn't a theory this isn't more big bang bullshit this is the truth all right Okay, well, I'm going to take one little break here, you know, collect my thoughts. Uh, see you in a minute. Well, yeah, I mean, if you were wondering why thousands of inbred hillbillies just took over your, your White House, your, the capital of the greatest nation on earth, you know, try telling people the truth for a change. So Google, if you're listening to me, you got some smart guys, right? Certainly you must, that can think for themselves. Uh, come on, give me a shot here. They can tell you that I'm telling you the truth, okay? Then you'll know the truth. I'm trying to do you a favor here. Anyway. Okay, so hell, you know what they have to sing in 
physics majors, what they say in MIT. You can see it on YouTube. You can look it up on YouTube if you want. We all believe in relativity, relativity, relativity. I mean, oh, man. I mean, you know, it's freakier than Jonestown. It really is. Okay. So let's... Um, Let's just review the, the redshift. I mean, it doesn't hurt maybe to fortify this thought in your mind, although, you know, it's pretty elementary. You know how sound is when a train goes by, it's going, the whistle's going, and then it goes, you know. No, wait a minute. No, 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 I got that backwards. It's coming towards you, it's going, okay, because when it's coming towards you, the waves are scrunching up. And when it's going away, the waves are, you know, they're trying to catch up to the train. So the sound changes because that's what sound is. The light is kind of similar, except that there isn't any air for light to travel through. As a matter of fact, light has no mass and light actually um, doesn't travel through anything. But it appears to, certainly. And if things are moving towards each other, uh, the color shifts towards the red. Oh, wait a minute. They're backwards again. If they're moving towards each other, they shift towards the blue, you see, because the waves all scrunch up. That's blue color, and it starts going away. If they're moving apart from each other, it gets what we call red shifted. Okay. Now, that's really important. You understand that, how that works, okay? So um, maybe here, uh, let me think here. Let's look at a, a different illustration here. Let's just flash back on this one, okay? This is a new video, and I don't want to repeat myself too often, but there isn't really that much to know. It isn't that hard. It just takes time to get onto it, and uh, maybe for me to get good at presenting it. So anyway, this is a hypothetical universe here, and the universe, of course, is quite porous. And uh, I get in an argument with you. A, a government lackey today, you know, or about, um, well, you know, you know, there's no outer, okay, come on. If you fire uh, a beam of protons or something, I don't know, electrons or something at a, a sheet metal, uh, matter is almost all open space if you get down far enough to see it. But we're really talking about a different kind of space here. When the cosmologists are talking about space, they're talking about the distance between the raisins. And the bread dough is expanding, so little raisins are moving apart. But in real cosmic expansion, that's in the cosmic expansion model, and that's what the truth is based on. The raisins occupy space, and they also expand. As a matter of fact, within the universe, due to cosmic expansion, if the universe is expanding, there wouldn't be any change within it whatsoever, no matter how small it got, or no matter how big it got. Does that sound strange? But it's true. And how do we know that? Well, in large part because of the pound Rebka experiment that you know, was touted to validate Einstein. Einstein again, you know, he predicted, oh, come on, you know, no, he, he had no, nothing to do with it. It said nothing about relativity. It was just, you know, you've been get you've been getting bamboozled. You know, who's behind this this stuffing this crap out of us? I don't know, but uh, come on. Okay, well, let's look at the truth of the matter here. If the universe is expanding, we'll talk about. We can prove that it is in a cosmic way, so that the rulers and the clocks and everything else expand with it. All the laws of physics still apply in what, well, that should have been on Einstein's frame of reference where all the all the laws of, of all the laws of physics are the same. Because no matter how much the universe expands, nothing changes within. Well, how do we know that? Well, the pound Rebka experiment, of course, it showed us that clock speeds. Um, are slower, closer to the earth. And, you know, maybe they don't talk about this enough in school, but the length of a meter shrinks in the same proportion as the clock speed. 
You see, the only way that a meter even knows that it's a meter, that's called a natural, natural definition. A meter doesn't know it's a meter, you know, unless there's a certain number of wavelengths over the distance of a meter and a certain given period of time, there's a certain specific spectrum of light. So it's very exact. And if the clock runs more slowly and there's a Doppler shift or a gravitational shift towards the blue at the same time, then the meter stick has to shrink as well. Now there's a chapter in my book, Upper Land, that goes into detail, actually derives these facts mathematically in a very simple fashion. It doesn't require any relativity and there isn't any relativity used there. They bring up some monstrous equation that is meaningless and then they throw it out and say, like, well, we go back to, uh, to Newton, Newton's potential energy law in order to solve it. And that's what I do, that's what I did there. And, but what does it mean? Well, let's assume we have, well, let's just assume for a second that we have the earth here at the center of our universe. So we're just gonna move a little ways out here. You know, um, what the pound repka experiment is telling us is, is that the speed of light, the velocity of light increases and shifts towards a red. All right. But everything is the same. The ruler is longer and the clock is running faster. Okay. Understand that? But locally, it's all the same. That's what we're talking about right here. Cosmic expansion is that the speed of light, the velocity of light increases and shifts towards a red. All right. But everything is the same. The ruler is longer and the clock is running faster. Okay. Understand that? But locally, it's all the same. That's what we're talking about right here. Cosmic expansion. The earth is actually expanding. Well, we all are, but the earth has more mass, so it's expanding faster. And it's actually accelerating, and that is the cause of gravity. But we'll talk about that more, okay? You know, if you follow through with these facts, now this is a fact here, okay? That everything is the same if the universe gets larger. And if you move away from Earth a certain however distance they, your arc, get away from a body of mass and the force of gravity and, and the ruler will grow. And this is space expanding, but nothing changes. At a given gravitational potential, the speed of light and all other things in the universe are the same, exactly the same. So there you go. And um, these are just facts. This is basic. This is freshman physics. But it so turns out what they don't talk about too much is that in this cosmic expansion scenario, okay, we see actual cosmic expansion taking place. And, and, and uh, why don't we actually see things expanding? Well, take a look, we're on sign. Your ruler is growing, your clock is running faster at the same time, it has to. And notice that time and distance are two sides of the same coin. They're, they're a team. There's no time without distance, no distance without time. It's a, you know, thing. So as the universe expands, I'll take a look here. I suppose we have another, another, another level of expansion here. Uh, let, let's take it one step further. Let's, let's go to this one. And, but the thing is, see that if this is a, a larger object away from earth, let's not imagine that the whole universe is expanding at this point, but we've got a, a, a larger object away from earth and then another larger object away farther away from earth. And we see that for a given mass, the average redshift, see, because things are always in motion. We're just talking about as a whole here. 
as a whole, all objects that are distant are redshifted, more or less according to their mass, proportional to their mass. Okay, so um, this is important, really important. So how can that be? I mean, they're equidistant. You can measure the distance, but they're redshifted. Well, that's what Einstein calls gravitational uh, redshift. And that's the big, maybe the biggest in it, the first biggest in a series of, well, I don't know if he ever didn't make a mistake. You know, just don't don't bother yourself with this with that crap. But um, um why are things redshifted and they're stationary? You just can't say it's no. Things are redshifted when they're receding away from each other, when they're moving apart. But we measure a fixed distance, don't we? But wait a minute, look at the universe here for a minute and see if as it expands, things don't move apart because they do. See, they recede away from each other. Yes, interesting, isn't it? And it just so happens that the rate of their recession away matches the degree to which they're redshifted. Hey, you can use the Doppler equations to actually figure out how fast they are receding away, even though they're stationary. And where, how is that? How can that be? Because we measure them as stationary. How could they be moving apart? Okay, you know, think here. Light has no mass. It isn't constrained by the ruler uh, clock thing, you see. Light knows what the real distance is. And so it's bouncing or it's traveling from these distant objects and it's coming in redshift in proportion to the mass. <laughs> they call it gravitational redshift, but see, it's not. You see, if, if the universe is expanding, well, we're not really talking about the whole universe necessarily at this point, because if the whole universe is expanding, we don't know about that. Problem. We don't see any difference in redshift, would we? Well, but see, here's the thing. The redshift between two points is equal to the gravitational potential between them. Okay, stop right there. Remember Einstein, he's saying like, you know, for the Unified field theory, we need like uh, to explain the connection between electromagnetism and gravity. Ding, ding, ding. Didn't we just do that? Okay, there's no such thing as gravitational redshift. It doesn't make any sense at all. Do redshift is Doppler. That's what it, and you can see it's Doppler because it fits, everything fits if you consider it to be a Doppler shift. If it, and you see, that, you see that in the pound Repka experiment, okay? You see that the velocity of light coming down is the exact precise opposite of, well, no, 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 let me rephrase that. The velocity of light on the way up as it accelerates on the way up, is it the exact same increase in acceleration of falling bodies on the Earth? You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, see what I'm saying? But what I'm talking about, gravity, just, I mean, I, I, okay, I got ahead of myself a little bit there. Here we're just talking about uniform motion. Everything should be redshifted a certain amount. It just turns out that just like the force of gravity, it, even at this point, we'd have no gravity, you know, the, the, um, the amount of redshift and rate of travel between us is exactly the same as gravity would be. Okay, we still haven't actually talked about where gravity comes from yet, if it isn't obvious. So, 
Um, let me think here. I'm going to go to this illustration here. Let's go. Let's come to this one for a little bit. And so we're going to talk about gravity. Okay. And let's talk about a beam of light that you aim away from the Earth. Okay. As it leaves, it shifts towards the red because it's accelerating. You see? It's accelerating. Wait a minute. The force of gravity pulls things in. You know, things don't run away from gravity. The light does. And as a matter of fact, the rate at which it accelerates is exactly the same rate as a object of the, a falling object towards the earth. There's, they're mirror images of each other. So we could go back to the other diagram. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are we saying here? It was a constant uniform, you know, motion thing. Something shifted towards the red, and now all of a sudden it's, it's, it's shifting towards the red really fast. And uh, thank God, you know, the force is uh, inversely proportional to the radius of the distance, or, you know, everything would really fly off into outer space. But, okay. Um, nothing just accelerates away from the earth unless there is a force. Now, is it interesting that the opposite motion, exact opposite motion of a falling body is called the force of gravity? And the rate at which it's falling is basically what they call potential energy. So in other words, do I have to, I don't really have to prove this, do I? I mean, you can see this plainly enough. Okay, if the light is being stretched out and its velocity is increasing between body A and, and say Jupiter, or Mars, okay, because they're receding away from each other. Then that's the rate of that recession is equal to the gravitational potential between them. That's how fast objects will be drawn towards each other and fall together. And that is because of the force of the acceleration of expansion. So we see, okay, follow me carefully here. We see for a greater mass, we see that it's receding away at twice the rate. The force of gravity, you know, it's receding away on the cosmic, but we can't see that, okay? It's light is telling us that because it doesn't try, it isn't constrained by clocks and meter sticks, okay? Let's go back, remember? Light is telling us what's really going on. It's telling us that object is receding away at say 9.8 meters per second, per second. And lo and behold, you know, here we are close to the surface of the earth and it's exactly matching the rate of a falling body, 9.8 meters per second, per second. Okay. There's a force going that way. That's the force of expansion and there's a force coming back the other way. Why? Well, you jump off a diving board, okay? The force that you jump off a diving board is equal to the force that you push down on. That's why. Think about it. It's called Newton's third law of gravitation. Third law of something. <laughs> I don't know if it's gravitation, but the third law is Third law of motion, I think, is what it is probably was probably referred to. That every action, and an action is a force, creates an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, listen. I'm not stretching things out of proportion here. That's the only way you can interpret these experiments. Of course, there's one other small problem problem here. Um, 
Well, let's talk about that. Huh? Well, let's just talk about the universe as a whole here. As mass doubles, the force of gravity increases, which means the rate of expansion is twice as much. So the rate of expansion is equal to the force of gravity. And the rate of expansion, the differential rate of expansion between two objects is the difference in velocity of light between those two points. See, that's the redshift between this, and that's also the difference in velocity, okay, the redshift. That, you know, change in frequency is a change in velocity, okay? We're right on, okay? Facts here, not crackpot ideas. This is the truth. Okay, so as these objects are receding away from each other, proportional to the mass, then the whole entire universe must have a gravitational potential at the surface of it too. And it must be proportional to its mass. What kiss one? It couldn't be anything other than the speed of light. But what we see, the redshifts of little bodies in, inside of our sphere here are redshifts that are uh, just tiny differences from place to place. I mean, the whole universe is expanding at the speed of light, but it's, it's meaningless. It, it doesn't affect anything, you know, just like the ruler leaving the earth or anywhere you take it in the universe or inside a black hole, it's still a foot or a meter. It's not a singularity. It might look like one from your perspective, but it's not. And the universe as a whole, you know, it can, it isn't, gravitation isn't going to change. The density is the same, no matter how big or how small it gets. It's fixed. The size that we measure is fixed. It ain't going anywhere from any kind of expansion. It's fixed. That's what we see. The expansion, we don't see. We just see it reflected to us as redshift. And that tells us the redshift between any two points in the universe, the rate of expansion between them, which is equal to the gravitational potential. It's the holy grail of physics right there. And don't tell me it isn't proof. Don't spout any more of your Uncle Scam Mama's Einstein. Blah, 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 blah. We all live. We all believe in relativity, relativity, relativity. Come on, Google, let's get with it here. You know, they're smart enough to know I'm telling you the truth. Okay, all right, geez. Well, uh, let's look at this illustration here. It's kind of, it's kind of cute, I think. Um, this is, a, well, it's the same, same thing. We see that as we get away from Earth, you know, space expands, the ruler stick grows, the laws of physics are still the same. It can expand forever and ever and ever and ever. And the whole universe has been expanding at an incremental speed of light at an accumulated rate of big C for billions of years and probably eternity. That's, that's the way the universe works. That's what real space is all about. And we've just proved that. It's just brilliant. Okay, got to walk back through. I'm working hard here. I need your help. So this guy is falling, you know, and as he falls, you know, he's blue shifted because things are moving together. Uh, as a light would, you know, as a light would travel towards between him and the earth, it'd be, become blue shifted. And, uh, but he wouldn't see that, you know. He, 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 but we see it, you know, standing from afar, we can see it, see, it. But, but in his constant frame of revenue, where rulers and clocks are constantly moving back and forth, it doesn't matter where you go with that ruler and clock and frequencies, light is going to say everything is constant for you, for us raisins who are inside. Oh, <sighs> okay, uh, popping off a little bit there, all right, so this this guy is falling towards the earth and um and of course you know a reminder here of our little and and there's a doppler shift and, and and it's funny because you know we just talked about this that if somebody shines a light you know it has nothing to do with this guy 
but it'll show the same uh, curved redshift. Because remember, gravity and expansion, this expansion is actually accelerating. That's what's responsible for the force of gravity, right? Right. Okay, so uh, this is not a, this is not, I mean, the rate of expansion is increasing per second per second as this guy falls. And uh, the rate of expansion is doing just the op opposite in the other direction uh, for a beam of light because it actually is, you actually are moving apart, you see. Uh, number one, living inside the universe means that everything is always fixed. All right. And number two, if you, kick in the afterburner and you accelerate that expansion, you still don't see it, but you feel it. Or you can see it actually in the redshift of light going away. I mean, think about it. Oh, you, know, you can see it. You can see the, the, the light is accelerating and expanding because everything is pushing everything else away in the cosmic realm outside your the fixed dimensions that you've been trapped in since the universe was created, which probably it was always here, you know, and will always be here. There's no reason why it can't expand into an infinite dimension. There's nothing to stop it. You just have to get used to it. It's kind of weird, but it's true. It's a fact. Maybe, um, maybe if I show you this. Uh, oh, just hold on a second here. I'm going to hunt it down. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, this this little fella um, moving. No, he isn't moving for me. Oh, here we go. Well, I just thought this was kind of cute. This guy's falling towards Earth at an accelerating rate, which of course you know it would. It's just the same diagram as the last one. It's no big deal. You get it, right? Okay, as you leave the planet with a yardstick, the yardstick grows with distance. And if you're falling to Earth, your yardstick is shrinking, your clock is slowing down. Um, the frequency of light seen from a remote, by a remote observer is increasing. Wavelengths are moving closer together because the distances are shrinking. And there is, if a beam of light travels the other way, it traces the same exact contour of, well, the rate of velocity or movement in one direction is exactly equal to the rate of the other. And that's because from an outside point of view, from an outside frame of reference, from an outside coordinate system, the universe is expanding and it has to be expanding at precisely the same perfectly balanced rate as the force of gravity that we perceive down here. All right. I mean, what, what more can you say? I mean, it isn't, you look, I'm not saying I'm the greatest scientist in the world or the smartest guy in the guy dang world. Probably other people will figure this out, but just don't want to listen to him because all oh, this god dang big bang propaganda, Einstein bullshit. Okay, excuse me. All right, you know, I'm sorry, I'm carried away, but really, 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 if you follow this presentation through, 
And it may not be perfect, but I think it's the best one I've done so far because I don't rely on any kind of notes or anything, any kind of memory. You know, there's probably some things that I'll forget to talk about doing it this way. But um, uh, let me take another break here and uh, we'll, we'll hit on another couple of subjects. Okay, cut another few points. But um, this is proof. Come on. You know, what do you want? You, well, you can't understand it. You're just one of these guys that wants to appear, appear smart to your daddy. Say, yeah, Einstein, you know, well, one other thing that I wanted to talk about was Newton's G. Well, I missed something here that uh, if the universe is, okay, by this time, this shouldn't bother you if I say this, because you know what's true. If you came this far, if you have a working mind and you're able to break through the brainwash, you know, this is solid proof. Okay, all the evidence supports it. But one thing I didn't mention, if that actually is true, if light is being pulled away by expansion, yeah, if that's true on with the redshift between bodies, you know, uh, celestial bodies, then it also must be true on a, like on a global scale. That means the gravitational potential at the surface of the Earth is not just that it's the speed of light, but that light itself is being propagated by expansion. That may be a little difficult to hear, but that's what actually is going on. If you, if you think about how we're receiving the redshift from Doppler recession in the outer sphere that we can't see, and the true size of the sphere, because our, fixed, our dimensions are fixed inside, then that means when the universe is expanding, when anything is expanding, the velocity of light is due to that expansion that we see. It's just we see these little bitty things with celestial, celestial bodies, little bitty differences. But the universe as a whole, that's the speed of light. Come on, you know, think about it. Yeah, I'm not stretching these things out. I'm not pulling your leg. I'm telling you to be straight. Okay, so we take a look at Newton's G. And when I was doing this, I forgot all about Einstein and his big blunder. I hadn't, didn't have that thought in my mind at all, but I was thinking, geez, you know, I mean, certainly there must be a big bang. I mean, I don't want to be embarrassing. There wasn't one. I better go along with them and say there was, you know, I mean, you know, I was brainwashed too, you know, but it's, the more I thought about it, because take a look at this universe as it expands, the density is still the same inside. And we know that this is responsible for the force of gravity. This is proved logically based on the experiments. Oh, and I might add too, if that were true, then, then the speed of light would have to be exactly the same in all directions. Exactly. It would have to be because everything is stretching apart. You see, there's nothing that light tr is transmitted through and it's part, not part of the clock ruler uh, game. It has no mass and it, it just tells the truth. Yeah, that's what light does. It tells you how fast things are receding away from you. And the physicists call it gravitational redshift when it's actually cosmic expansion. It is true cosmic expansion. Wake up, snap out of it. So yeah, light isn't actually, and by the way, this universe is extremely, our universe is extremely porous. I mean, you know, the, the light isn't just bound, going to the end of the universe and bouncing out of it. It's, it's, it's it, both dimensions are, raw space, raw cosmic space and matter are very well mingled. And as a matter of fact, you know, if you've done one of those experiments or seen one of those experiments that show uh, protons being fired through aluminum foil or something, you know that matter is almost all empty space. And where raw space is concerned, it really doesn't matter how much you shrink or swallow the universe is still gonna be the same. I know that's 
goes contrary to your experience, but we're talking, we're not talking about distance between objects here. We're talking about true cosmic space. That's the way it works. Obviously, the laws of physics never change with cosmic expansion. And the property of mass is cosmic expansion, obviously, because twice the mass is twice the expansion, it's twice the force of gravity. So, okay, all this falls into place. Don't have a problem with it. Just, you know, help me, help, help get the word out here so that we can fight all these lies. Anyway, Newton's G. I thought, well, you know, maybe inside for some other reason it's expanding the raisins are shooting away from each other anyway. You know, I mean, maybe they're right about the Big Bang, but I was beginning not to think so because they were correlating intergalactic redshift with, with um, uh, standard candles. And of course, what they're assuming here is that the differences they're seeing represent the rate of the expansion of the universe, but they don't. They, they only represent the differential rates of expansion between those two points. Okay, they don't realize that the redshift is not because they have these standard candles. They think, oh, you know, that must be actual recession. No. no. But remember that where, okay, where does this progressive um, redshift come from? You know, that's a big question. We don't see it. Okay, why do they call it gravitational redshift within? A galaxy, and then if it's intergalactic, then all of a sudden, you know, because you, you have this, because the effect isn't being seen until, you know, it takes a considerable amount for it to be seen. Well, remember that the speed of light in the cosmic dimension as a whole, which is accelerating at the speed of light per second per second, you know, um, that's cumulative. So, the value of big C, the actual rate of the expansion of the universe seen from the outside is a, a number too big to calculate, really. It would have to be. But um, notice that over a very long period of time, these slight differences due to the extra boost of gravity in your redshift, which is, remember, ever, since everything is expanding in an accelerating manner, it, it doesn't have an effect very far away from an object of mass, but it's still there. And a fractional, a fractional amount of that relative to big C, which must be, you know, it must be such a tiny fraction that you wouldn't see it, that progressive increase. But until you get to the intergalactic scale, and once you get far enough away, then you begin to see it. So what the physicists are actually measuring there is the difference in rates of expansion between way back then and now and um, on the cosmic level, because remember light doesn't lie, but our yardsticks and clocks do. They always say the same thing, okay? And they don't know that. And you know, it's such an embarrassment. I mean, can you imagine having 120 year old egg all over your face? I mean, you'll, they'll never admit to it, <laughs> never. Okay, the only hope the truth has is you. If you're smart enough and have a good enough background to understand this, you know, that I brought you to that point, then I don't have to die thinking that all the secrets of the universe died with me because I'm telling you the truth. <coughs> Excuse me. And if the universe were fixed in that way, you know, well, let's, you know, if, if, if it were possible that the universe were expanding anyway, you know, you want to take a look at Newton's G. And uh, so that's what I did. And I found out something interesting here. Of course, they never talk about that. It's just a fudge factor, you know. But uh, G is equal. Well, G's units are, I won't give you the actual value. That's obtained by experiment. But we don't need, we don't need that here. G is equal to, well, it's actually R cubed or length cubed, length cubed. But I made length r here for a reason, and I split it into r to the power of two times r, which is r cubed. And oh wait, um, here's the right diagram. Okay, now I remember it. So 
it's supposed to be the second square root in the denominator in the first expression. So we come out with g equal to r squared, which would be the radius of the universe squared times the speed of light uh, divided by m, the mass of the universe. Now, note carefully, this is extremely important. You know, this is a lot more important than E equals MC squared, okay? Take a good, a good look. Newton had to, Einstein had to know this. He's not that stupid. He just said, well, okay, I made a mistake. G can be very, to appease the big bangers. And so we got this fraud going on. And, and come on, seriously, <laughs> get a fraud from the ground up. Don't ask me how it all came about. I go into a little bit of that in the book, but I, I don't know that much. I don't see all that deeply into that aspect of the problem, but the mathematical and the physical end of it, I see very clearly. 2020, the year it came to me. But anyway, so those are the three fundamental constants of the universe. Uh, acceleration of light, the size in terms of radius, and the mass of the universe. Those three things, that's all, no more, no less. Okay, so G is actually the radius of the universe squared over the mass of the universe times the acceleration of light, not the speed of light, as I said earlier. And that means there's zero possibility of any Big Bang. Now, you've got the correct model of the universe and cause of gravity that the holy grail of physics that they've been looking for throughout history. It's right here. I'm not a crackpot. I didn't just make it up. I don't, it's not an idea. It's not a hypothesis. It's fact because it fits all the known observations. And well, I mean, you know, you can't get a better proof than that. That's the big, the long and the short of it. It's a proof. And if you can't see it, well, just go away. You know, maybe most people probably aren't intelligent enough to see it. I'm pretty sure, or educated well enough, okay? But I would say if you're a college graduate with a science major or math, you know, especially math, where you haven't brainwashed so badly, that's it. You can, you can do it. And you can tell others that this is right. Please, thank you. Let others know about this video. Uh, bye now.